this sort of prejudice in India that if you write about the Mughals, you are glorifying the Mughals uh, and that uh, you are somehow therefore a Marxist and a leftist. While if you write about ancient India and are seen to be enthusiastic about um, Aryabhata and Brahmagupta and their achievements, that you are suddenly a, a card-carrying member of the RSS and have shifted far to the right and, and, and are politically suspect from that point of view. I, I am neither a Marxist, nor am I a member of the RSS. I avoid writing about the Indus Valley or the whole um, question of the Aryan invasion theory and so on. I, I didn't want to get hijacked by uh, that battlefield. India came up with the nearest thing that um, there is to a universal language in that the Indian number system is used everywhere by the 13th century. India did indeed um, transform, ancient India did indeed transform the world. And I don't think you have to be uh, a right winger or a member of the RSS to say that very clearly. The Golden Road, How Ancient India Transformed the World is a work of ambition. We are joined by its author, William Darlimper. Welcome, William. Very good to be back, Alan. Thank you. The neglect of the penetration of India's soft power in ancient world. Why do you think uh, the historians uh, were sloppy about it? The problem, I think, has been that these academic texts have not been integrated with the wider um, uh, story of Indian soft power. There are different sort of silos out there which um, this work tends to get isolated into. In other words, there's one world which is talking about the Sanskritization of Southeast Asia, um, in which has been some excellent work by Indian historians. But it's how we, uh, you place Nalanda there in the. Do you see it as an ancient leap of pedagogical imagination? We have to be very careful not to be anachronistic about Nalanda. Uh, in, it, it unquestionably was the major centre of learning, not only in, in modern South Asia, but uh, in the whole region. And you have scholars coming from China, Japan, Korea, Nepal, Tibet, Sri Lanka, Srivijaya, which is Indonesia, uh, uh, to this place. Um, and so it's a major centre of learning. But you also hint that uh, one reason why the Indian ancestry of a lot of ideas uh, has lost with the time because their effect was a kind of relay. The Indian fingerprint, if you like, on these Arab texts are still very much there. No one is disguising the Indian origin of these things, even as they travel through the Mediterranean as far as Britain. Uh, they're still very much uh, attributed to Indian scholars. Uh, and India has not told the story of its diffusion of its soft power out. And in many areas of Southeast Asia, where earlier generations of Indian scholars slightly uh, overstated the case to the point that uh, they, they claimed that there was you know, Indian military and political conquest of Southeast Asia, which was simply not historically true. My view has always been that good scholarship uh, need not be in an inaccessible language. Uh, Good scholarship is about using primary sources, about uh, uh, coming up with interesting and innovative ideas that, that connect the dots in history. Uh, and there's no need to express it in, uh, in jargon.